Raimund Hoha este unul dintre cei mai interesanți și inovatori dansatori și coregrafi ai modernității. Autor a peste 20 de mari spectacole de dans și a șapte volume traduse în franceză, spaniolă și japoneză, artistul german și-a început cariera în lumea artei ca realizator de portrete pentru prestigiosul săptămânal german Die Zeit. În 1980, talentul său jurnalistic îl apropie de Pina Bausch, poate una dintre cele mai importante coregrafe din Europa. Această colaborare îi schimbă lui Raymond Hohe întregul traseu artistic. Devine dramaturg și își face primele apariții pe scenă. Începe să își dorească un drum al lui în fascinanta lumea dansului. În 1994, lansează un prim solo, Mein Warz, un manifest care îi anunță intențiile artistice și preocupările pentru istoria Germaniei și anularea standardelor frumuseții. Corpul meu, care nu poate fi numit frumos, mă poate duce departe în căutarea frumuseții. Își enunța el motoul încă de la începutul carierei în dans. De atunci, Raymond Hohe a realizat câte un spectacol pe an, 21 în total până în prezent. A fost subiectul principal a patru biografii publicate în Franța, Germania și Marea Britanie. Televiziunea de stat germană a realizat un portret de o oră intitulat Cocoșatul. Ca recunoașterea impactului său uriaș asupra publicului, în 2008 a avut parte de o apreciere cu totul specială. A fost desemnat de către redacția celei mai importante publicații europene dedicate dansului, Baletanz Magazin, drept cel mai bun dansator al anului, alături de celebra balerină Sylvie Ghiem. Aflat într-o scurtă vizită în România, Raymond Hohe a povestit echipei Digipedia Plus ce înseamnă adevărata frumusețe. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Um, it's, it's an honor to have you here in Romania and with us. You are a writer, a dancer, a choreographer, a dramaturg. What exactly are you the most? Which is the first definition? Human being, it's my first definition. So I'm first a human being and so I express myself in different ways. So first I express myself as a writer, then uh, Writer was from beginning, also when I was working with Pina as a dramaturg, I still was writing. And today I'm a choreographer and dancer, but I'm still writing sometimes, but very short. Uh, texts only, or emails, <laughs> but I'm not writing books now, as I did in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, you were saying at some point that your body was invisible with words, so you felt the need to uh, make it visible. Uh, through movement. Was it frustrating when you were a writer? Is it better now? No, it's uh, first I express myself with words, but with the body I can express other things. It was not that I suffered, that I was in, the body was invisible, but I had to express with my body some things. And the first solo I did for myself in 1992, it was mine words, a word you can't translate, it's like me words, it's from a poem, from a Jewish poet, Else Lasker Schüler. And in uh, this first solo, I was talking about the history of uh, Jewish tenor, Josef Schmidt, who was exiled by the Nazis, and he died in internment camp in Switzerland in 1942. And I wanted to tell something about his story at also my size. And at the time when I created the piece in 1994, many people died of AIDS. I wanted to say something about this too. And I had the feeling I can express only with my body. I can't ask a dancer, for example, from Brazil to talk about German history. Or about my experiences I had as a writer with people with AIDS. So I had to think I had to do by myself. And in this time also, I was very impressed by the French writer, Hervé Guibert, who died of AIDS. And he filmed also himself at the end of his life, a self-portrait, he was naked. His body was not beautiful anymore. He was very skinny, but he was not scared to present his body. The same Pier Paolo Pasolini, another very important figure for me. Uh, and he made
made also some self-portraits, photos, where he was naked so at the end of his life. And it was also another beauty of body. And they gave me the courage to present my body on stage. And this famous sentence from Pasolini, throwing the body into, into the fight. fight. This was, an, yeah, they gave me the courage to do this. It was not that I was frustrated as a writer. I liked writing, but I feel with the body and together with the music, I can reach another level. What was the moment, exactly the moment, when you knew that you wanted to dance? Did you dance when you were a child? Did you have any connection with dancing at some point? I had a dream. Also when I was grown up, there was this twist area, so we danced then a little bit like this. So this, I didn't try, but I never thought I could be a dancer. And I was going to the theater. My mother also was going to theater. I was grown up with my mother because she was not married with my father. So, and she was going with my older sister, regular to the theater, and I was very interested in theater. And uh, at the end of my school time, I was as an extra on stage in Wuppertal, where I was born in the city, but uh, I was not uh, in special roles. I was always in roles like for Shakespeare comedy, so as a hunchback tailor. So in this roles and this was finished after school and I didn't think I could go on stage. But then after working with Pina, uh, then I saw also very different dances, very different bodies. So slowly it was growing. And when I did the first solo pieces for dances, sometimes I was doing very little things in the back. And then people said, oh, it's very interesting what you do. You should be more on stage. And then when I did this about Josef Schmidt, then I had the feeling I have to do. How did it feel? first time on stage, the exact feeling that you had? I was scared. Maybe the first solo, also mine, but it was very dark from the light also. The theme was dark, but also the lighting. And I had a black suit all the time, and so I was more covered. The body was, in a way, not so visible. Even in the very beginning, the piece starts when my back is visible naked. So I'm hanging on a trapeze, so to a beautiful area. This was like a birth also for me, the image like a birth. And we are not born with clothes. Then I was getting more and more also in my works. I go to the light, now I show my body. I don't run around naked all the time, but I present my body on stage also without a t-shirt. I do what I want to do and I do the pieces I want to see. And uh, yeah, then I don't question myself what feeling. I don't remember so well. Also now when I'm on stage, I try to connect myself uh, with the music. This is the thing. What is your inspiration? How do you start? How do you think about a, a, the next piece? I, there is a dream or a desire for something, but I feel more uh, what Stravinsky explained when he composed uh, the Sacre, the Rite of Spring, uh, uh, plays this also in the beginning of the piece and at the end, he's saying, I'm the vessel through which the Sacre passed. And he said also, I wrote what I heard. So it, for me, it's the same. I try to open myself, like many great theater directors, as uh, Peter Brook, he said, also in rehearsal, you create an atmosphere that things can happen. So I feel for myself I'm not the creator of a piece. It sounds very strange, but I don't feel as a creator. I'm open and then from the universe or 
So I get this inspiration through the music. I think music connects very well and brings you to another level. It's also healing. Music can heal people and has a big influence. And for me, I can do things on stage and with music, which I can't do without music. Why? What, what does it do to you? It's a power. The music has an enormous power, some music, to bring you over limits. Of me and also in the audience, people have so very strong experience. Sometimes they cry and they don't know why, but the music touches something inside people. And then I want to share this with people, that they have also this experience, that they have something different as in usual life. Some artists have periods when they are more oriented towards history, they are more oriented towards portraits. You mix them once in a while, you don't have a, 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 this year preference for that, that year preference for that. You have in general a, a preference for what? For human beings, they always come back that um, also in my writings, I was very interested in portraits. I made a lot of portraits about very different people, famous people, unknown people, ordinary women who was working, for example, uh, as a cleaning woman or also a famous actress. So it doesn't matter for me, they are human beings. And I was always interested in this. And also I'm interested in the personalities of the dancers. I want to share this beauty of the dancers with an audience and to show them, look, these people are existing. There is some strength, some beauty in the world. I don't do auditions, for example. I don't invite people to come for an audition. I meet by accident also sometimes for young people. We had auditions, but most of the people I met, like in a cafe, they were working there as a waiter or waitress. And I look for this kind of, they had something I was interested in, this personality. What do you see? What do you look at? Do you look at hands? Do you look at no. the, the way they move? You know, it's something, it touches, also when you fall in love, you can't explain what it is, why this person, it's not the hands or, or something or the hair. And for the young people also, I was looking for people that they are not the usual body, it's some, that you don't think, oh, she has beautiful hair, or he has a beautiful body, or the t-shirts are so great. Uh, I really looked for also how they are dressed on stage. Very, very simple. It's not uh, the T-shirt you remember, or not the haircut. Die Nacht war kalt. Es waren so kalt die Steine. Es lugt aus dem Fenster die blasse Gestalt, beleuchtet vom Mondenscheine. There was for the audition. There was the most. They called the most beautiful girl of the city in Bruges. It was in Belgium. It was the European capital of culture in 2000. She came then and she was very aware that she was looking great and torn. And then I said to her after the first round, so I'm very sorry, so, but you are too beautiful <laughs> for this. And then she said, oh, you are the first person who is saying this so, because she wanted to be like a model. And I'm not interested for me in my work to have a model on stage. I realize this when watching uh, Pina's works, for instance, mm -hmm. I love the dresses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I as a woman, I enjoyed many things, but I love the dresses. And you remember the dresses. Do you think this, these things can, can uh, divert someone from seeing what it needs to see? Yeah, I think for me it would be terrible if you would say, uh, remind, uh, is it, but it's the case. When I was working with Pina, it was another period. It was in the 80s and then the women didn't have 
so beautiful dresses as the last 20 years. But for me, it would be terrible. And I saw also a performance from a young choreographer in front. The, the T-shirts, the colors I liked very much. It was so strong. I only remember that they were very strong colors. I don't remember any dancer, even not the names you don't remember. Of it. You just remember dresses or T-shirts. It's very simple and I like also that people don't know why they like. Mm -hmm. It's not the virtuosity. Je ne sais quoi. Uh, sometimes you can do things on stage, it's very virtuose. They, oh, I would like to jump like this. And I'm not interested. In, when they do in rehearsal, I say, oh no, I'm not so, it's very spectacular. Then I know why it's impressing. I like more uh, when it, you don't know why, but you are impressed and you don't know why, Be because it's something inside, there's another quality, it uh, has nothing to do with the dress or hair. And I think this is also important for people in the audience to think for themselves. It's not because I wear a good dress or this or this. People are allowed to have their dreams. Sometimes uh, people say, oh, I'm sorry, sometimes I was drifting away in the perform. I was thinking about so many things. And they said, it's very good, it's good. It's, people are scared for their own thoughts, that they dream, that they have their dreams, and they shouldn't be afraid. I have a quality as a human being. And this was also my experience as a writer. When I did these portraits, maybe the best portraits were about unknown people and people sometimes on a very low social level. But they had this courage to go on, to live their life, the head up, and not so like a slave. And this, uh, I was very impressed by this and what they could tell also about the life. What quality in, in a human being you're most attracted to is like what you're looking for in the people you want to work with? I always come back to Maria Callas and she said in a master class, keep on going in a proper way, not with fireworks, not with an easy applause, but with your real feeling, whatever it is. And this I like in people when they go on with their feeling and uh, whatever it is, so that they can be very different people. We have all different backgrounds, but that we go on with our feeling, that we don't live life for other people. Look where is nothing to see, listen where is nothing to hear. You think there is nothing to see, or, but there is something, or you think there is nothing to hear, but just to listen, to be careful, to open the eyes wide. And then you see also in the dark sometimes, also on stage when it's very dark, sometimes when there's little light, you see something. You have to focus on this looking and to hear. Are there moments when you're working with the music and the light to create this? That's what I'm asking. Do you on purpose create this? I don't uh, create on purpose. I'm very open. I just am really surprised later how the things come together. It's, yeah, I'm the vessel through which the things are. I, I try to be, and then finding for me something is right. This is also what Stravinsky uh, said. So he said when he composed the Sacre, Du Ponton and Child was playing in front of his house and the child was screaming, it's wrong, it's wrong. And Stravinsky replied, maybe it's wrong for you, but not for me. And that's the same for me. It has to be right for me, not for some, I have the feeling. And only when it's right for me, it's finished the piece. If I feel there are some moments they are not right for me, or I have to think about something, how do I come to this next scene, then I change.
Walt Whitman said at some point, this is one of my favorite quotes, he said, do I contradict myself? Very well then, I contradict myself. I'm large, I contain multitudes. I've seen you on stage as a, as a priest, uh, dressed, uh, dressed up as a woman. How large are you? I don't know. I think I want to grow. For me, life is grown and to change also the life. So I had different professions in my life, so different uh, houses, different cities. So I want to grow. This is uh, why I'm doing things. And also as long as I can learn, as long as I can learn, then I will live. If I can't learn anymore, uh, I will die and I don't want to die now. It's really for me to go on to learn new things, to discover things I couldn't imagine. So I couldn't imagine um, when I was a teenager or later even what I do now, it was something impossible to imagine. But I followed, I followed some line in my life. Is there something or someone you cannot be on stage? I don't want to play very negative things, so I don't want I don't want to see for myself on stage uh, very n negative or ugly. So I, we can have a long discussion about beauty, but I want also that the dancers, everyone is beautiful on stage, but it's not the beauty of the advertisement. Beauty as a human being, you feel the history of the person, and uh, this was one of the nicest compliments after performance with young people. Someone said to me, at the end, everyone was beautiful. And as a spectator, you loved everyone. And it was not, uh, they were so different. Some really not so attractive. In, uh, but uh, that you get, the, yeah, they are beautiful. And this is for me, the thing also why I choose a dancer, because inside the person are so beautiful. For example, also Takashi, I did the last pieces with. Also, then he smiles. Everyone likes to be with him on stage, to do a duet with him. They are all very happy because he's so generous. He's so giving, giving. And this is so great to work with these people. But if people are interested in another kind of theater or dance or more violent, then they should go somewhere else. So it's all should exist, but for me, I'm really looking for beauty. It was one year, I think 2008, when you were given an award and Sylvie Guillem was uh, given an award. Yeah. She's a, a virtuoso. Oh. You're not a, a, a dancer, a professional yeah. dancer, but you were both given an award. How did it feel when you received that award? I was very happy <laughs> that we saw her to receive this dancer of the year. It was, uh, she was a female, I was a male dancer of the year. And this was a very nice feeling that uh, this uh, very different people could be dancers of the year. And uh, for me it's great when people can do but uh, this virtual things. But for me also the soul has to be there. Some great dance. Also when we did uh, Swan Lake, uh, we watched the old Russian movies from Swan Lake or Maya Plisitskaya. She was a great dancer and uh, so very virtual. But there was also this something inside her that you still can cry when you see her dancing. And this is something very strong. So I uh, appreciate also these very great dancers. It's the same with musicians. Uh, Kalas was a great, great singer, but she had, some, had something more than the others. And this is something, it's, uh, even at the end of her life when the voice was not perfect anymore, I liked very much because she knew about what she was singing and she had a big influence on my work also with movements because she said, and she learned from her teacher, from a conductor, she said, you have to listen to the music with your heart and with your brain, what the music tells you, and then you know how to move. And you should listen more with the heart than with your brain. And this, 
it's one of the few things I tell the dancers. If I work for the first time with someone, just listen to the music. And some music can do immediately uh, this connection. And they listen to the music and then the journey begins. The same for the audience. It's uh, that they just listen and then the journey starts. And how do you know where it ends? Or how it should end? A performance it never ends on the floor. It's never someone lying on the floor. It's always standing up or it's going on. It's, it's n the end is not the end. You know, in all the pieces, the end is always something open for a new adventure or dream. Or it, it goes on always. go back once in a while to German history. Is, this, is there a wound that it's not healed and you need to patch it with the different performances? For me, the German history is a very important example also of what happened in the past and where something can end when we are not careful. And I'm German, I was born after the war, but I have this strong link to the history. And when I was growing up in Germany, no one talked about the past, and they didn't talk about many things, but at school they never talked about the Holocaust or Third Reich, nothing was talked. And so therefore I had to, yeah, I have also what happened with people with disability, also with Roma and Sinti, and we didn't talk about this. And for me, it's very important to remember till now why, why it's happened and what can be the result if you exclude people. If you say, these people have the right to live. This uh, country is better than the other country. We are all human beings. Also, this is a great experience in performance. People understand. So this piece is very similar. It doesn't matter where they live. And this first solo, mine, but it's really a German story, the whole piece. But I performed once in London, and then I, there came a young woman from Kurdistan, from Turkey, and she said, it was like, you talked about the history of the Kurdish people. The piece was not about, but she could feel it was something similar. The, she could have the link, and this is important. Every country has the problems, but we have to be careful, and we have to talk about, we have to accept the history, and also even younger people than me still feel this pressure from German history, because something is going on still in the heads of people. The reactions also on my work, on my body, they are different in Germany than... Because it's the idea of perfect body, perfect an body, ideal yeah, body. this ideal yeah. body. Yeah. Even in the streets you feel there's another look. So also here no one is looking at me. So still there is in that, Germany, that it's expectation still, yeah, of... Yeah, it still it seems to be. Also how critics write some in ordinary newspapers. You feel it's not over. They don't have words. They even don't have words for my body. And does it make you feel uh, to uh, make out of your performance a manifesto? I think it's a statement. When I come on stage, it's a statement that I exist and I want to exist. And I don't excuse myself for being on stage. I don't say, oh, please have pity. And I'm not also in the framework of uh, disability theater. That's something else at the corner. It's more like therapy. Some of what's very good, you can do this. But uh, for me, theater is not a therapy. Also for me personally, it's not a therapy. I don't feel better because I'm on stage. It's not the case. Or I have the same problems to go like 
to sauna or swim than before. It doesn't matter that I can show on stage to my back. I don't show uh, uh, outside. So I wouldn't go to the swimming pool in the hotel. Or I wouldn't. But so therefore, it's very clear for me the war between theater and uh, therapy. Word, music, movement. What is the connection? Who helps who? And the music helps me. With music, it's going over borders. This is a strong experience I have. And I heard also that here in Romania, people have a very strong relation to music. So it's very, very strong, the emotion they have, also in a concert or so. And this is beautiful, I think, if people in the country have this very strong link to music, because it helps, I think. Did you get to see a bit of uh, a place here where it, it, you can hear music or dancing? No, only like in the restaurants, the music or in the hotels, but I'm very short here, I'm very sorry, but I like very much this atmosphere in the city and also I was with my artistic collaborator uh, uh, today in the city and he said oh, it's something very soft from the people here, it's very more soft than in Germany, more polite also, it's very good atmosphere we feel. Which are the main things you learned from people who you worked with, like Pina, but some other other people? There are so many uh, people, uh, like the dancers helped me a lot now to do what I do. My artistic collaborator, my mother helped me a lot. She died when I was 18, so, but she gave me the feeling I'm okay. She accepted me with my body, everything. She made beautiful things for me. She was a tailor. She made dresses for me so that I was always properly dressed and we didn't have much money but she was fighting or living her dream she was going to theater in for women or for a social level was not usual to do so I learned from her most of the things because of, as a child it's very important how the family background is what the parents give to you. And my mother gave me this thing, yeah, you can live your life. So, but she also, she was a really very ordinary woman. So, be fighting to survive with financial things. But she had the dreams. My grandfather also, he was over 80. He was going to every movie in the city, every, Every day, with 80 years, he was going to the movies, and as a child, he took me to the movies. So I was very impressed by them, and later also from Pina, the work she did in the 70s and 80s. So, and how she was with the dancers in the rehearsals, 
that she never interrupted someone, she always watched. She didn't make comments immediately, she didn't judge, she just was open to see and she wrote down all the answers so from the dancers. And later she selected, but she never gave immediately, oh no, it's not good, or this is good. So then people were very free. And this uh, is very important for me, so this, to give these people that they feel free and accepted. And so I learned, I learned also uh, from the cleaning woman, I made a big portrait about her. I learned from this, from many people I was writing, uh, for also from uh, literature like Maxim Gorky or Anton Chekhov. Uh, I learned a lot, uh, I tried to learn, I love their work, it was very important for me. Can p other people come with ideas, for instance, if you have a, a dancer that comes with his own link to, to the history or who to, with his own idea, can you take it over and make some of something of it? Yes, yeah, uh, most of the dancers I work with, they do also their own works. They are not only working for me and or for other choreographers. Most of them they don't work for other choreographers anymore, but they create their own pieces. So Emanuel Egamont, one of the dancers, I did very important pieces, also like uh, La Premedi and uh, Bolero Variations, Cantata, Si Je Meurs. And he's doing, since some years, his own work. It's very different from my work, but they like to enter always also my universe. So I think, but I, it's, I think it wouldn't work with a dancer who is interested in something completely different, in techno music or so, or some very spectacular. Or I don't like also all the people when they are so proud of themselves. I don't like this to see on stage that people are so selfish and so, or I'm so beautiful, so great. They all, all of my dance, they have something, yeah. They are a bit shy in a way, they can be very much, but they are not pretentious at all. And I don't like this, I wouldn't work with someone who's pretentious, and also I wouldn't work with someone who needs my comments. This, uh, so sometimes I try this dance, and in half an hour already it's clear for me, when this person is coming, I did two years ago with someone, and he came, oh, what did you think, what did you think, how was it for you? And then I felt, oh no, it's not working at all. So, and then we stopped also, it was a try, but then it's very fast for me, clear. And some others also, when I did for replacements for young people, some they just could stand still, they didn't need any explanation. And I like these people, to, for themselves, and it doesn't help to explain to someone that this piece of music is beautiful. It, uh, this person understands or not, and if not, I'm not the right person. It's uh, like magic. It's like magic. It's magic. It's so like you meet the right people, maybe at the right moment, and it's changing. It, on stage and we are doing um, something like that. How would you um, move on this and what music should, should I use for this? What music should we use for this piece and which movement for this interview? Well, no, no, I have in mind because I listened just before from Judy Garland, what shall I do? <laughs> it's a beautiful song and the voice was broken and she sing what she, she do, uh, the love is gone, she just has a photo and this is a very beautiful short song, not a famous song. Uh, the other is like by myself, also from Judy. I go my way by myself. Okay, I'll try this one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much Thank you. for being with us. And uh, I hope you come more often and I, I hope you get to see people dancing here. Maybe you fall yeah. in love with some dancers, yeah. who knows? Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.